In normal circumstances, the second round of the French Open should have been on today. But the year's second Grand Slam was postponed. And we will have to wait at least until the end of September to watch Rafa Nadal and Ash Barty fighting it out on the clay courts in Paris. Let's have a look at what else is happening in the world of tennis. This is Sports Fight. While Wimbledon organizers were forced to cancel their event for the first time since the Second World War, the French Tennis Federation decided to buy more time and give themselves an opportunity to save the tournament by pushing it till the back of September. That would however mean the French Open will start right after the US Open Grand Slam, which is currently scheduled to be held from the end of August. An indoor tennis facility at the US Open venue was converted into a temporary hospital at the end of March. But the US Tennis Association remain hopeful they can begin their tournament on schedule. A decision on the fate of the hardcore Grand Slam is expected at the middle of June. The professional tennis circuit was suspended in early March and will remain on hold till at least the end of July. But in good signs, there were a few exhibition events held recently in Germany and the United States. But this were broadcast only events and were played without fans. This could provide a blueprint for future organizers to host their event. World number one Novak Djokovic recently said that he is assembling a host of players, including Dominic Thiem, Sasha Zarev, and Grigor Dimitrov for a series of exhibition matches in the Balkan region. But he is not sure if fans will be allowed for those matches. For some players, like US Open champion in 2014, Marin Cilic, matches without fans are like practice matches. There's always gonna be, oh, uh, you know, that guy won, won uh, US Open in 2020 without fans, you know, that's not uh, really official. The French Tennis Federation's decision to shift the Grand Slam to the end of September did not go down well with other administrators. They termed the decision unilateral, while players across the world bemoaned the lack of communication. It, however, gave the Men's ATP Tour, the Women's WTA, the International Tennis Federation and the organizers of the four Grand Slams an opportunity to come together, sit down and chalk out a new tennis schedule for the rest of 2020. The sport is, however, expected to be one of the last ones to resume because of the international travel restrictions in place. The tennis shutdown has proved extremely difficult for lower-end professionals. It left them without an opportunity to earn their livelihood as they depend solely on the winnings from the tournaments they play in. Djokovic said some players told him they would have to give up the sport, while some raised an online petition for help. The tennis governing bodies did come together and they raised about $6 million to help out the distressed players. Will that fund prove enough? Only time will tell. While the shutdown has been extremely difficult for tennis, it has also presented some positive signs. The coordination among the governing bodies over the Player Relief Fund and the tennis calendar raised hopes of a more unified governance in the future. Roger Federer, in a series of sudden tweets, fanned that idea by proposing a merger between the men's ATP Tour and the women's WTA. Both the men's ATP Tour and the WTA chiefs welcomed the idea. Will tennis emerge as a much stronger sport? We will have to wait and see.